Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested. And for today, I have a quick show and tell of a few things that are at the intersection of three things I hold very dear. Star Wars, action figures, and coffee table books. Uh, it's not quite the end of the year yet, so I'm not doing my annual big coffee table book roundup, but I do have a few Star Wars coffee table books here I wanna talk about and share as we're in kind of in a, a Star Wars nostalgia kick right now. There's that really wonderful Light and Magic ILM documentary that just debuted on Disney Plus last week, and we've been savoring every episode in this household, and it's got me going back to the bookshelf and and picking up some of my favorite books that dive into one of the core pieces of Star Wars nostalgia, which is action figure collecting. And a new book just came in, um, in that world. So perfect timing, um, perfect uh, opportunity to share those with you. A few of these I've talked about on the channel before, but worth reminding you if you haven't checked them out yet. Uh, the first one here is kind of the, the quintessential, the essential um, coffee table book on Star Wars action figures. It was written by Steve Sansweet, released uh, over a decade ago now, and it's Star Wars The Ultimate action figure collection. Steve Sansweet, as Star Wars fans know, uh, he runs Rancho Obi-Wan, which is his collection and a museum of basically the world's largest uh, personal collection of Star Wars memorabilia. So everything from action figures, posters, uh, food packaging, toys, uh, rarities, uh, fan-made collect uh, collectibles, Anything that's officially and even unofficially Star Wars license, Steve has one copy of, or likely has a copy of, uh, and he has it displayed. Even the bootlegs, those famous uh, bootleg Star Wars toys, he has them on display at Rancho Obi-Wan, which we've had the pleasure of visiting up here in Northern California. Definitely a place to check out. Uh, they were recently at Star Wars Celebration with part of their collection. And Steve has written a couple books about his collection. Uh, and this one is the one just all about action figures. Uh, it's a kind of a visual catalog. So flipping through it, it's organized by character. So every page, every spread here basically has a classic Star Wars character, you know, all the recognizable names from your Lukes and Hans and Leia's and Vader's and Obi-Wan's uh, to the lesser known characters, things that were in comic books or the TV shows. Uh, and every page has representations of those characters in toy form, whether from the original Kenner, three and three quarter inch uh, action figures to the larger ones or the more recent ones from Hasbro's vintage collection line. Uh, there's a nice representation of all of these and the, all the variants as well. So a little bit of information about each of those and just this wonderful photos throughout. So for the completionists or just people want to get a sense of the history of toys. And it's really cool to see what one character, how that character has been interpreted over the decades as different toy manufacturing uh, has, has developed as well as, again, this nostalgia field um, return to older formats and older uh, styles of action figures as well. Uh, the next book here uh, is a little bit of, more of a rarity, um, and this one I picked up at a Star Wars celebration, of, oof, I want to say six, seven years ago now. It's from two writers, Duncan Jenkins and Gus Lopez, and they too have a few books about Star Wars memorabilia and collecting. They have this huge, incredible catalog of everything branded Star Wars. Uh, but this one's more unique because it's about specifically the prototypes of Star Wars action figures. So going way back to the original Kenner figures, and if you like that docu-series, The Toys That Made Us, um, which I really enjoy, this is basically that that show in book form. So everything from original sculpts to mold masters to uh, packaging design, unpainted sculpts, again, things that would never see the light of day if it wasn't for fans doing deep research and collectors going into finding these uh, artifacts uh, in, in private collections and able to document them. Um, and certainly not things that you'd find necessarily a good collection of photos of 
of Online. It's a really cool book that gives a fascinating look into the toy making process from how they choose colors to how injection molds and silicone molds are made and how these prototypes were went through the whole pipeline from a sculptor's tabletop and workbench uh, to the prepackaged uh, toys that end up in collectors' hands. A uh, really, really neat book. And something that just arrived dives into the modern world of Star Wars action figure collecting. And this is called the Vintage Collection Archive Edition. That's right. It was actually a Kickstarter project launched a couple of years ago, successful, and they've started shipping these off to backers. This was sent to me by one of the co-authors, Rich Allot, and they run Blue Milk Productions, where they've now published this book as well as uh, some beautiful collectors' photographs and memorabilia tied to the world of Star Wars collecting. So in this nice slipcase, a few items that were exclusive to their Kickstarter campaign, a commemorative coin set, a nice cover here, very reminiscent of that uh, storage case that you got with the Kenner figures, a poster, again, very much in the old classic Star Wars toy advertisement. Oh, this looks like it would be, it was pulled out right of a, out of a, an old magazine, uh, but of modern figures and the book as well, which they do sell on their website. I'll flip through a few of these pages. So this one isn't organized by character. It's organized more, it's chronological, and it starts off back in the early aughts when Hasbro, with Star Wars license, toy license, decided to revisit that three and three quarter inch uh, style of figure with that classic Kenner style uh, black border backing. So um, contributors to this book, not only Star Wars fans and collectors, but also some of those Hasbro brand managers that worked on the trilogy collection, the Saga collection in the early and mid aughts, reissuing essentially your Luke and Han and Leia and Vader. The series became so popular that uh, Hasbro decided to continue on releasing new versions and new characters, and now it's known as the Vintage Collection, which lives alongside their bigger Black Series collection. Uh, so this goes through the history and a lot more text. You know, it's still very beautifully laid out. It's still a visual catalog primarily with you know, turnarounds and imagery of all the packaging, but a lot of great insight into you know the context, the contextual um, uh, storytelling of when what fans had at the time, what the fan reactions were, what the development process was like, you know, and all the excitement around the launch of these um, around Comic Cons and Star Wars celebrations in the mid aughts through uh, the past 12 years. And it's just, again, a really great catalog. It has uh, lots of cool info. One of my favorite parts, though, is between the chapters, as they talk about the, uh, the different eras of the style of action figure in the modern era, they also commission some really lovely photos, uh, toy photography. So I'm a sucker for some great toy photography. And one of the things they included in this edition that they also sell separately uh, is uh, this printouts of the photos that are basically the chapter breaks. So some beautiful representations. Oh, I love this one. This is a, a nice take on the Phantom Menace poster with the shadow of Anakin being Vader. It's a beautiful photo here you have from episode three. You have, yep, some wonderful, some original uh, trilogy scenes using all in three and three quarter scale, wonderful lighting, some fog effects. Yeah, some really, really lovely photos. So definitely put some of these in frames and put them around the office. And the book covers the vintage collection through 2019, which is when they had their Kickstarter. So while it does include that first big HasLab project, the big Jabba sail barge playset, uh, it doesn't have the uh, new vintage collection figures and the stuff obviously just announced this past year. Things from the Mandalorian, including the Razor Crest uh, vehicle that Adam and I are still working on. So hopefully this can be an ongoing project and we'll have opportunities to update the 
coffee table book as the years uh, go by. But it's a lovely uh, passion project, labor of love from these fans and has wonderful photos uh, and just a, one of those things that you can just dive into in a weekend uh, of reading. And it now has a prominent place on my bookshelf uh, in the Star Wars action figure coffee table book section. But if you have a favorite coffee table book relating to Star Wars, nostalgia, action figures, let me know in the comments below. And I'll also put links to where you can find these books in the description. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.